Uh, let's see, organizer started. Okay, so we're uh, being recorded now. And what you see up in front of you is the basics of what we're going to go through in the searching class. All right, so you guys have, a, have had a moment to look that over. Let's go ahead and flip on over to research. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Now, you'll notice that I like to use a pink arrow throughout uh, the teaching. So the pink arrow right now is located on the far left side because we're going to look at a couple different um, searches that you can perform. And then we'll spend the rest, of the majority of the class, the rest of the remainder will be in the um, looking at listings. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the search menu. So if you hit the plus sign to the right of the word search, it opens up this menu. Now, I'm going to collapse it by hitting the minus sign, okay? And I'm going to show you another way. Now, if you were to hit the word search, it opens the submenu, but it also takes you immediately to the searching for listings, which is the uh, very first choice here in our search list. So we aren't going to really start there today. We're going to end up there. So let me go back to the home page or the dashboard. And you can do that by clicking on the word dashboard. Now, what if you don't see this menu on the left-hand side? If you don't see the menu on the left-hand side, chances are is that you have it toggled off. So let me show you how to toggle it on and off. In the upper right corner of the dark blue area where the pink arrow is pointing to, that is like a hamburger. That's what we call that, the hamburger icon. Well, actually, I call it the veggie burger. <laughs> so anyway, you click on that, and it will hide your menu if your menu was visible. And if your menu was hidden, if you click it again, it will make the menu visible on your screen. Now, let me take it uh, one more step and go ahead and make it slide in so it's not visible. This is how you get the menu to show up, is you just move your arrow or your cursor over in this area over here on the left-hand side, the far left, and your menu will slide open. That is if you have it toggled off position, okay? So real easy, I'll just move my mouse out of the way and it goes away and it hides. The reason why some people like to have this um, or use this particular uh, view is because it does expand your screen um, quite a bit. It gives you a couple more inches of screen space, okay? Now, when I go uh, to toggle this back where it's always visible, um, it does minimize our screen some, you know. So that's the benefit of using the toggle menu off. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and we're going to start over as if we were going to uh, look at different items on the search menu. So I'm going to hit the plus sign, and these items below the word search are all the different types of searches that you can perform in our system in the research system. So, search for listings, this is where we're going to end up at the end of the class here. Um, the next item is search, uh, create a CMA, excuse me, create a CMA. We actually hold a class that will cover create a CMA, getting your listing update, and getting your parcel update. Okay, so be looking for those webinars uh, that include those topics, which um, should, I believe, fall under the CMA. We have two CMA classes. One is within our research system, and then we hold another CMA class um, that is using an auxiliary type of program called Cloud CMA. So there's two CMA classes we offer. The next item down, it says search for open house. Well, that one is covered in a class about open houses, so we won't be covering that option today. Searching the roster. Well, we take a look at that in the Getting Started webinar. In addition to that, there is a webinar that we teach you how to um, search the roster and download the information that you can then input into your Outlook system. 
so that you can send out mass emails. Okay, so uh, you can look for that class on uh, using utilizing the roster for that. And the my contacts, that particular search is handled when we teach you the prospecting class. We'll show you how to use the contacts, and it goes hand in hand with prospecting. So the last few here that we're going to take a look at today, search for businesses. If I click on search businesses, it brings us to these search fields. And just as if we were searching in the listings, um, this particular search format also has the ability to minimize the little screens that you see here. If I hit the minus sign to the right of the arrow, you can see all these different sections that are currently open that I'm going to collapse and then I will expand them in a moment. But I wanted to show you that within the searching for businesses, there are different categories of fields. Okay, You can search for an officer's name. You can search for stock information, for trademark information, um, or back to the basic of business fields having to do with the business itself. Most likely, when you go in to search for a business, you'll be searching for a business name, I would presume. So let's go ahead and open up that area, that category of fields. And here you can see you can search under business name, business type, locality, um, etc. Okay, so let's just try something simple and we'll put in, um, let's do Costco. Okay, I'm just going to put in Costco. And then when I click outside the box, or if I were to click on the little magnifying glass over here to the right, it brings up all the possibilities, all the possible matches for the word that I just typed in. So I typed in C-O-S-T-C-O, Costco. And these are all of the um, options that came back for me. So um, I'm not really interested uh, in the insurance, uh, the travel. Um, but I am interested in uh, seeing information about Costco Wholesale. So I'm going to check all of these items here. Okay, and you can see there's numerous of them. And um, as a reminder, this is actually accessing state um, the state of Hawaii records. So if you're looking for a business, it, as long as it's in the state of Hawaii, registered in the state of Hawaii, you'll be able to find it here. Okay, it's not it's not just like the MLS, which is just Kauai and Big Island for the most part. Um, these records span the entire state. Okay, once you have selected the options, um, you can click outside the box, and it rolls all that back up into this line here. And down at the bottom, just as if you were searching for listings, you can see your request line. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and click search now. And out of all those options, there are only three that show up. Now that tells me that they probably changed names. They probably registered under one name and then um, changed, tweaked it a little bit, and that's no longer a business name. But now Costco Wholesale Membership Inc. is the business name, et cetera. So here are the file numbers having to do with the business registration. So you can click on any of those. It will open up into another screen and give you detailed information about that. So you can see um, the officer's names, transactions that have occurred in regards to filing documents with the state. So you've got articles of mergers and director changes and things like that. And then trademarks that have been registered here. You can see the file numbers for those. And let's see what else. I don't generally search businesses, so, okay. So that looks like um, what it's giving us on this particular view. All right, let's go ahead and um, go back. Now, if you're a longtime user of our system, you probably recall in years past, we've always said, oh, don't hit the back button. Whatever you do, don't hit the back button on your browser because it used to log you out. But now when you hit the back button, it just takes you back one screen. So you can end up where you were here. Now, if you were also, uh, I went ahead and clicked on that same 
file number. Um, you can also go back to your search by clicking up here on the top on the tab that says search. So we'll click that and it takes us back to our results. And guess what? If we click on miscellaneous tab, it'll take us back to the results when I had clicked that um, particular number earlier. Okay, so that's how you can search for businesses. Now let's go ahead and um, do a new search. I'm going to click new search down below, which clears out all the search criteria and brings me back to my search page here. Okay, so in addition to the fields dealing with businesses, you can also look at fields dealing with officer names, particular stocks, and I believe there's another category, yeah, for the trademarks. If you want to search a specific file name for a trademark or something like that. Okay, in addition to searching for businesses, you can also search for licensees in our database. And if you look right here on the far left side, under the search menu, I'm going to click on search licensees. And we're not uh, talking about just real estate licensees talking about any um, licensed individual in the state. So with that being said, let's play around with this a little bit. Um, let's try searching license type and I like to use the beauty shop. Okay, so I'm going to click on the word beauty shop and then click somewhere else um, if I wanted to add other types of licenses, I could just click them here and it would add them along. Um, as you can see, it's adding them to the field up above, but I'm not going to do that. So we'll just stick with beauty shops. Okay. Now when I click outside the box, you can see that field is now occupied with beauty shop as well as the request line below um, says employer license type beauty shop. All right, so now let's see. Let's do a business zip code. I'm going to put two of them in. So whenever you put two items in, you can separate those with a comma. And the system will automatically put it in the proper order. Um, so if I had done, let's do a couple zip codes. Let's see. Okay, so you can see it puts it in the proper formation that it needs to be. Um, so you never want to put have the word and in here because it would be impossible for a business to have 96740 and zip code 96737. Okay, so uh, the system uses the word or and then also it places it on the request line down below. So let's go ahead and click search now and see what beauty shops are registered that have that zip code in their address. Okay, so we'll wait for that to respond. And it's giving us the company information as well as the licensee information. So the first line here is the name of the salon or the beauty shop, and then we have the licensed individuals under that particular beauty shop. So you can see how that works. This one is a massage and spa, and you can see the beauty operator license. Okay, any questions there? So you can do that with any of the license types in the state of Hawaii. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new search, and when you open up the license type uh, submenu by clicking the little down arrow, you see it gives me a scrollable list, so you can look up contractor names, guards, uh, whatever we uh, the occupations that we have uh, license types for here. All right. Okay, excellent. So that takes care of taking a peek at the searching for businesses and searching for licensees. Now, the search condo guides, we're going to talk about that when we do, um, I believe it's the, well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, I'm not sure which class it falls under, but we'll take a, a little peek at it real quick. Searching the condo guides. So I can put in a project name, and 
and click the search button to the right or just click anywhere outside the box and it goes I didn't I didn't select anything so it um, oh there we go let me make it a little easier by putting the whole name you can see if I just put in Ali'i, it brought up a lot of different choices for me to select from. But Ali'i Lani, I can select that. And then I'll go ahead and hit Search Now. And it comes back with Ali'i Lani right here. And what it is presenting to us is this floor plan link, okay? So when I click on that, it is a report that you can get. Um, and because the way that I have my system set up is that it downloads and saves the file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll save it to my desktop. Make it easy to find. Okay, your, your system might go ahead and automatically open it up. Um, but mine I have... Oh, it doesn't... It's kind of lost. It doesn't know what... Oh, I probably have a, a multiple readers on. So anyway, it will eventually open up for you, <laughs> and what you see here is the um, expiration notice, okay? It's telling me that this document's going to expire Tuesday, March the 7th at such and such time, and um, I have to click OK to get through this. Now, you can share this file with your clients, um, but the files are only good for two weeks. You can always go back and re-download it, okay? So, uh, this one is four pages long. Some of them have a photo of the outside of the project. Um, it's not all of them. Some of them have the floor plans listed. And some of them have further information beyond that. Um, and they're all different, what's included in the, in the condo project report. Okay, so just uh, some information put together for you. And we'll go back to research because I, I viewed it in a PDF file. So, all right. And then the final search is searching for prospect matches, and you can probably guess that we do cover that in the prospect contacts and prospect class. Now, how do you look at all these classes and find classes that are available? Well, down here, right with the graduation cap, <laughs> right next to it is the word training. You just click on training. And it will show you our upcoming classes. So these are the remainder of the classes available to you through the end of the month. And then March's schedule will be posted about the last week of February. So um, you can see we're uh, participating in this class right now for searching. And the next class today is formats. If you'd like to sign up for the class and you haven't, it's easy. You just click on the register now button and put your information in and that will register you, register you for the other class that's being held today at 12.30. Okay, now let's get to the meat of the matter, which is probably the reason most of us um, come to this class or join this class is for searching for listings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on search for listings. And once again, um, the first thing I like to do is I like to minimize all of these categories of fields so that you can become aware of how many fields are available to you just on this page here alone. Now right now I've collapsed all the different sections, the categories, but you can see, let's start at the bottom. So if you're searching for a project and you want fields related to projects, okay, um, and these can be either MLS fields or public records fields, either or. Um, you can open up this section here and take a look and find the field that you wanted to use. And you can see we've divided it out for you with these light blue bars. This indicates that the fields below are from the MLS database. And then scrolling down, these project-related fields here come to you from the public records database, okay? All right. So the same thing would go for the remainder of these sections. So that was project and then under address. We can take a look here real quick and see for under are the address. 
you can see you can search the MLS address or the TMK address. Now, if somebody were to approach you and say, this is my address and I'm interested in having you list my property, okay? So if you were going to come back to the office and search for that, you would want to use the public records, street name and street number fields. And the reason you would want to do that is because if you utilize the MLS address fields, then you're relying on that property had been, you're, you're making an assumption that that property has been in the MLS system before, meaning that it was listed and sold, or maybe it was listed for sale but never sold. Um, so it's going to be what? And a withdrawn listing, an expired listing. Um, maybe it um, is actively listed now. That's something you've got to check for. Some I've actually encountered this in my time where I went to list a vacant land property and I pull up the TMK number and find out that it's already active listed, actively listed. Now, if the seller contacts you directly about their property and you discover that it's actively listed for sale, um, you are fine. You want to talk to your broker about what your broker advises you to do at that point. But if the seller contacts you and the property is already actively listed, you haven't done anything wrong, okay? Because you know that we are not supposed to um, contact a seller where their property is listed for sale with another company. So, okay. Um, so anyway, here's address fields that you can search with. You can search um, under people under sales information, if you want to find sold properties, you can search under uh, TMK detail. So these are the public records fields, um, detail fields here, and then there's detail fields of the MLS here. And then most people spend the majority of their time searching directly out of this quick search section. So let's start there. So I just expanded that by hitting the plus sign in the upper right corner. And let's go ahead and build a very simple search. Let's say that somebody contacted us and said, yeah, I would like to find a three bedroom, two bath home in the North Kona district. Okay, well let's build that search. We're gonna occupy the tax key. Um, one way to uh, pull up these listings is to put in the district, which would be 3-7 for North Kona, and then click outside the box. And as you can see, our request line will become filled with fields that we're occupying. Okay, So let's select active for active status and um, we'll say that they requested a single family home. So we'll select residential. And we know that they wanted a minimum of three bedrooms and a minimum of two bathrooms. Okay, now let's talk about this. We've already got a decision to make here. Right here it says minimum bedrooms total. So we could put three in here. But what do you suppose this minimum, hold on, where is it? Oh, minimum bedrooms right here, right below it. Minimum bedrooms, okay? Now, if you, um, I'm going to tell you the difference here, but if you forget, you can always try looking at the hover help. Now, the hover help is where you hover your mouse over the field name, and it pops up with a little black box with reverse writing, and this one says the total number of bedrooms on the property. Okay, total number of bedrooms on the property. Where when you look at the minimum bedrooms field directly below, it says the number of bedrooms in each building. So therefore, if you um, put in three bedrooms here and a property was listed for sale that had two bedrooms in the main home and then a auxiliary building, an ohana or um, a separate structure with more bedrooms in it, another bedroom in it, then it would take the total of the entire property um, to do this, perform the search on. So I'm going to go ahead and put in three bedrooms total. So that would be everything on the actual TMK itself. 
Um, when I say TMK, I'm talking about the tax map key. And that is um, a unique identifier uh, assigned to each uh, separate property in the state of Hawaii. Okay, and so TMK, um, it was a, it took me a little bit to get used to that when I first moved, because I was practicing real estate on the mainland, and we called it the APN number, um, but moved to Hawaii and they call it the TMK number, which is fine. That wasn't too hard to to understand, but it was when people said, well, did you look up, did you look up the TMK? And so that threw me off at first. I'm like, okay, what do they mean? Did I look up in the tax map book? So I go get the big giant book out, and look up the parcel on there and, oh, no, no, look it up and research under the TMK. Anyway, it took me a while to realize that people were actually referring, use that word TMK, also meaning public records. So did you look it up in the public records on MLS? <laughs> is, is the same thing as someone asking you, did you look up the T, did you look it up in TMK? All right, so enough said about that. Minimum of three bedrooms and the bathrooms work the same way. So we have the maximum, uh, oh, here's our maximum bathroom, sorry. Maximum bathrooms total, minimum bathrooms total, and then just minimum bathrooms. Okay, so this would be total on the on the total property. So we want a minimum bedrooms of three and a minimum bathrooms of two. All right. So we are looking at residential, everything active in North Kona, at least three bedrooms and at least two bathrooms. That looks good. Let's go ahead and move with that one. So when I see my results on the screen, what I'm going to see is I am going to get 40 records per page and they are going to be sorted in the standard sort. Okay, by clicking the down arrow here, I wanted to show you that there are numerous ways that you can sort your results. Sort them by price, sort them by tax key number, sort them by zip code, or sort them by the sold date. Now, you'd have to be searching for sold properties in order to have it sort by sold date, right? Okay, so if you leave it on stand, standard sort, I believe the standard sort um, first sorts the list by the status of the listing. So if we had selected active, contingent, and under contract, then it would show you all the active listings first, then all the contingent ones, and then all the under contract ones. Okay, so that is what is en encompassed in the standard sort. And so therefore, if it grouped all the actives together first on the list, then it would sort them, the next sort field, it would sort them by price. Okay, so that's how that's going to sort. Now, number of records per page. You get 40 per page, the way that, that the page is set up right now. You can change that if you want. We'll leave it at 40 for now. Now we're going to talk about the format here in just a moment. Um, if we wanted to change our format. So we do a whole class on format, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. Um, but let's just leave it like it is. The standard default format, I believe, is set up for MLS. So we'll go ahead and click Search Now. Okay, and it might take a moment for our list to come back up. All right. And so here are the first 40 on the market here. So I can scroll down through my list, and you see at the very bottom of the list, it gives me a link for next page. So to see the next page of listings, I would click on next page, and it would take me to the next page of 40 listings. All right, let's go ahead and click modify. And I'll show you up here on your per page, where we had set it to 40, if you put in the word all, you won't have to go from page to page to page, okay? It'll have all, the, all of the results based upon your search parameters on one page, okay? Now, that could be problematic. Um, I have something flashing on my screen. Let me see if I can take care of this. There we go. Okay, um, that could be problematic for you, especially if there's a gob of listings that are going to come back. So how do you know 
unless you go ahead and just wait for all the results to come back. Well, there's an easy way to find out, and then that is by using the word count. So I'm going to click the word count, and it's going to come back and tell me there are 265 three-bedroom, two-bath homes in North Kona. Okay, now that's a little bit too many to be sending someone um, or to be printing off or to set up showings or what have you. So, of course, we would want more um, criteria to use to kind of narrow down our search. So let's say that um, we talked to the buyer a little bit more and found out that their um, maximum price that they can spend is $650. So we can go ahead and pop that in. And so when you're dealing with the listing price, okay, you, um, you, well, you make an assumption. The system is automatically going to consider thousands. So if my client can spend up to $650,000, all I need to put in is $650,000, $650. And then I click outside the box. All right, so we have our maximum price at $650,000. And all of our um, fields are showing up here at the bottom that we're currently occupying. And now I can go ahead and do a count one more time. And let's see what that brings back. 54 listings. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at our listings by clicking search now. So here's our uh, 54 listings. And so you can take a look. Um, And I'm going to show you a few things about listings and how you can uh, manipulate them. So as you can see right now, the records are coming back to me in regular format. They're not in customer format. So in other words, we can see the listing agent's information, right? Um, and in addition to that, let's talk about everything that's included in the regular format. I'm going to click on an MLS number here that will take me to the um, full MLS information. All right. I'm going to point out a couple of things. Scrolling down in this listing, you can see private remarks as well as driving directions. Um, show up on the listing because it's not in customer format. This listing agent information here um, regarding the CSB and whether there's sub-agency, that kind of thing, um, that shows up here. And then, of course, the listing agent's information, their office information and phone numbers, et cetera. So let's go ahead and convert this over into customer format. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can achieve this, okay? Um, first of all, if you are planning on just printing off this listing and you want just to put this listing in customer format, that's easy to do directly from the print action button. So I'm going to click the print action button below. And when I open up the action menu for print, it automatically gives me an option here where I can convert it to customer format. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark that. And now our listing in the background here has changed. No longer has the listing information, doesn't have the CSB, it doesn't have private remarks, um, it doesn't have driving directions. So those uh, elements are being hidden. And from here I can go ahead and click page and it will prepare the information to print. It opens up in a separate window and it basically makes kind of a PDF out of the file and gives you the ability to print this. So I can hit print and voila, it would go to my printer. Okay, um, let's go ahead and cancel out of this. And let's go ahead and go back to our um, listings. So I just closed out of that tab and now we're back into a research tab here. And we're back on this one listing that we had been looking at. Now, I could go back to the search results here. 
I believe the back button would probably work at this point. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can get back to your search results. Now let's try a couple other things. Let's check mark a few of these listings randomly. And what I mean by check mark is I just checked the little tiny box to the far left side of the listing. And I checked two of them and you can tell which ones I've checked because they've turned bright yellow. They've highlighted these. Now, the reason we give you the opportunity to select some listings is because I want to go down here and print these two listings, okay? It gives me the ability to print these two listings. Now, I can put it in customer format first. Voila. And then, at this point in time, it gives me the ability to print how many ever we had, like 53 or something? I could print the page of 53 listings and that would show the one-liners just like this. I could print the checked items, which are just going to be those two listings that I've checked, or I can print everything that is not checked. Okay, So you can toggle it the other way. All right, so that's how you can use the printing. And also uh, illustrating to you that the check marks are used for. Okay, and that works with many of the functions below. Now, let's go ahead and um, the beach ball is the next icon over. And that beach ball, we only use it in the mapping feature now. So when you take the mapping feature, we'll show you how to use the beach ball. The next icon over is a little uh, globe which shows the overview map for the listing. The next icon beyond that gives you a brochure format. So until you take the formats class, it's kind of good to get familiar with these preset formats here that might help you um, until you get to take all of the um, assortment of webinars that we do offer. Okay, and then this shows um, the listings photographs by clicking on the camera icon. Not only will it show you the photographs, it tells you how many the listing has. This listing has 10 photos. I can hover down over the next camera icon and this one has 25 photos. And the third one down has only eight photos. Okay, so it kind of gives you a heads up on how many photos there are. The next item is showing of the tax map. So um, each link here next to a listing can open up the tax map for you. And then we also have uh, schedule a showing, which is a fairly new feature. So you can click on this in a special software that will then um, help you set up a showing and connect with the listing agent and get back with you with confirmation, that kind of thing. So that's the um, showing software. All right, and occasionally you'll find some with some other icons like this one, and uh, this one has a virtual tour, so that has a little film strip there, so that's how we know that that's going to be a bit virtual tour. Uh, let's see if I can find another one. Um, okay, I'm not seeing one yet. There's also another icon that can appear on this far right side and that would be um, a document and that would be in the event that a listing agent has uploaded documents to the listing and it's called addenda. So if, a, if an agent has uploaded addenda to the listing you would be able to click on an icon there um, that would let you look at the clickable links to the different files. For instance, um, maybe the listing agent decided to add another page of photographs because 25 just doesn't do it. Maybe it's a big giant 170 acre farm. So there's a multitude. of different areas on the farm to be represented in the photographs, 20 person could add um, a page of photographs. Okay, that could be one thing. It could be documents. It could be the CCNRs. Um, whatever it might be, it will be a document and there will be a clickable link for you to access it to the right of the, uh, excuse me, to the left of the MLS number in this range here. Okay, let's now talk about a couple other things we can do, like copy. So I'm going to select 
a couple of these listings. And my goal is to copy this. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and utilize the copy function, which is about the middle of the screen down at the bottom here. And so when I select the copy function, I am going to make sure that customer format is selected, which it is. And now I want to copy just the checked ones, only the three here. Because if I did the not checked ones, it would show the other 50. And then if I did the entire page, you see, it would copy the entire 53 listings. So let's just copy the checked items. And when I click on that, it copies the checked items over to another window. In order to put this on my, um, uh, to, to put it in memory, like in a copy and paste situation, it puts it on my clipboard, um, it tells you in the tab up above what to do to achieve that. So pressing the control key down and the A, that is select all, okay? Select all. The next part is to copy it so that it will be copied to the clipboard. And that is the next function, control plus C. So once you have your item selected here, you do a control C, and then it um, copies all that for you. Control A selects it, control C copies it to the clipboard. Now all I have to do is open, say, for instance, a Word file, okay? And um, typing along, dear Mr. Seller, these are the listings we discussed. Okay, and I can go ahead and do a control V, which pastes the items. I can click my right mouse button, which gives me choices to do things, and I can click paste right here, and it will paste in those listings that I had selected, and voila. Now, these do post in, I mean, these do copy and paste in as active links. So as long as your customer has a, an active internet session, um, they can then click on the MLS number, the TMK number, um, perhaps even these uh, icons to the far left to see these documents and such relating to that listing. Okay. So I'm going to close out a word. All right, back to research. This is where we left off here. So that is the copy. Um, so if I were to click more, if I were to click more, um, it's asking me, do I want to show the checked or the not checked? So I only want to show the checked listings, okay? So when I deselect show my not checked items, what happens here? You can see the rest of the list disappears and only shows me the selected items. So I can toggle that back the other way. Show me the not checked items, but do not show me items that have been checked. So those three highlighted listings, boom, gone, disappeared. So uh, that is a way to toggle on and off the viewing of listings. Okay, that's using the more button. All right, now um, modify would allow me to modify my search criteria. Let's go ahead and click modify. Let's say that we're still too broad in our search criteria. We want to narrow it down even further. And let's say that we've um, learned more about our clients and uh, they can um, they only want property that's on a small lot, let's say, okay? So we could use land, uh, no, let's say, I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. Let's say that they only want fee simple, only fee simple property. Land tenure, and you select fee simple. So when I um, go to look at my listings now, they will be all properties that are um, fee simple, no leaseholds in here. Okay, so I could click search now. And 
and it does take a moment. All right, you should be seeing some listings now. When I do the count feature, there's 53. Okay, what else do we have to play with down here? We do have the ability to print. So let me open up a listing. And um, I want to print this listing, so I'll go to the print. And I only um, want to print the customer format version of this property. Okay, so that's done. Now I can go ahead and click print the page, because it's only got the one listing on it. Um, print the checked items, which I'm not sure if it would just show you the listing agent's information. That I don't know. Or um, the not checked items, okay? So that's another way to utilize the check marks when you're in there printing. All right, so you can email. Very easy to email. Click email, and you know whether to do the whole page, the checked items, or the not checked items. Notice it's going to put it in customer format for you already, okay? If you want it in regular format as it's being emailed to somebody, then you can deselect that box. Okay, and then basket. That's another thing we get to play with now. Let's go ahead and put this listing in the basket. Now, when I click on basket, it, the system's going to open up in another page, and it's going to tell you at the top of the page that this is your basket. The reason you want to look up there on the upper right, excuse me, upper left corner is because sometimes just viewing a listing could be the same look that you're looking at as if you were looking in your basket. Now, a basket, it's a temporary storage location. So say I wanted to put three listings in my basket. There are three listings out of this list of how many ever we're dealing with now that my client is interested in. So let me go back to the search tab. And if you recall, we can just click on the word search. That'll get us back to our results here. And so we selected that one. Let's select another listing. And um, let's actually look at the full listing first and say, yep, yep, this is the one. So let's go ahead and put that in our basket. And once again, do you want it in customer format or not? And do you want the entire page, just the checked items, or not checked? Well, since we're only looking at one listing at a time right now, and if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and scroll down. And there's only one listing here that meets that criteria that we have. So I could go ahead and um, do my entire page into the basket, which not only does it have the first beautiful listing, down below is the second listing in KHO View. Okay, now that's in your basket. Now, your basket stays alive and ready for you to use at any time during your session. As soon as you go up here and you do a logout, because by the way, this is the proper way to log out, okay, by hitting the logout. Or if you're one of those that just hits the X, okay, um, then when you come back into the MLS, your basket will be empty. So um, it does not save the information in there. All right, now, now that I have the basket in front of me, I can do whatever I want with these two listings. I can copy and paste them somewhere. I can print them. I can email these two listings to uh, my client. Um, I can create a PDF out of this document and save it to my hard drive if I wish. Okay, any questions about that? All right, now let's go back to our search results. And this time, Let's take a look at the photographs for a listing. Now here's a brand new listing. It's been on the market one day. Let's go ahead and see what the situation is with the photographs. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over the photograph. Oh, this one only has one. That's okay, we'll look at it. One photograph here. 
So what we'll do with this is we'll go ahead and put this in the basket as well. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to click on basket. And I'm going to say the entire page to the basket. It's only a page of one photo. So now I'm back to the basket. Okay, this is the temporary storage location. I'm going to scroll down through those two listings and then on to that third photograph. You see? All right. Let's go back to search. Okay. Now, creating a PDF. If you would like to create a PDF document, you can email the PDF, you can save it, you can put it on a, a some kind of a a media that you could take out of your computer and hand to the customer. Maybe it's on a thumb drive or um, CD-ROM, that kind of thing. Um, so those are some options for you, things you can do with your PDF. You can keep it. Lots of times I'll convert, say, a CMA over into a PDF file, and then I'll save it under my folder for the client so that I know that's the CMA I produced on such and such date and gave that to them when we listed the property. Then when I get an offer in, well, I do another um, CMA, show them what's happened in the market, save that to my hard drive. You get that gist of it. So click on PDF. And once again, do you want a, P a PDF of the entire page? Just a couple checked items, everything that's not checked. Do you want to convert it to customer format first? all these choices. So I'm going to go ahead and do the entire page. And what happens is, is it copies it over into another tab at the top of your screen, you see? And then from there, it's still churning away. It's now converting it to a PDF. So to get back into research, you can see the research tab right here in your browser. And so this is the tab that we're working in right now. And here is our uh, page. It's several pages actually. It's five pages. Okay. All right. So now that it's a PDF, hold on a second. My volume. Hold on. Let me test my audio real quick. Somehow or another I landed on the volume button and I think I got really loud maybe. Okay technical difficulties. Okay, so where were we? PDFs. We were talking, oh, oh, um, depending on what your browser is set up to view PDFs with, most of them, if you hover your mouse, um, if you don't see any of the functionality up here at the, in, in the corner where you can print or you can um, download to your hard drive, you can zoom in and out with these uh, icons here. If you don't see any of that there, if you move your mouse down into the lower section of the document, a lot of times those um, functionality buttons will pop up. Okay, so they just kind of hide until you're ready to use them. All right, let's now go back to research. Okay. Let's go ahead and click Modify. Let's modify and do a different kind of search. Now, say that I want to get rid of, um, let's say that I want to get rid of Fee Simple, okay? Maybe our client has decided they, they've learned more about leasehold and they're willing to go that way with the leasehold. So let's go ahead and um, take off our Fee Simple. There's two different ways you can do that. You can go right over here to the land tenure and click the down arrow and remove fee simple, okay? Or the other way is down here on the request line. If you find the field for fee simple, and right here it has MLS land tenure, that's the name of the field. Land tenure is the name of the field. It comes from the MLS database. And then the um, what we're searching on is fee simple. So let's get rid of this field. So you can hit the little garbage can to the right-hand side, and it removes the field. Okay, That's another way to modify your fields that you're occupying. And let's now shorten this tax key up a little bit and say that they've narrowed into 
oh, let's say three, seven, seven, two, three, seven, nine. Okay. So we're going to change the tax key there. You could have also changed it here as well. You can change any of these. Let's go ahead and click on the status active. If you click on that, um, not the garbage can part, but if you just click on the words MLS status active, you can see it pulls up and opens up the um, status field for us to go ahead and make changes to. So let's go ahead and add contingent to that as well. Now, you don't want to hit the garbage can because it would, it would trash it, but you do want to hit the little check mark box in the upper right corner to accept your um, changes. Okay, and then you can always hit the count button. And now you see um, where we have 24 listings that we could be uh, looking at now. So what happens if um, you create a search on your computer and you're like, I know that I'm going to be using this search a lot. Okay, um, what you can do to save yourself time is you can save the search. Now, you're not actually saving the 24 results or the 24 listings right here, okay? You're saving, what you're saving are the fields that you're occupying, so tax key and status, property type, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, okay? So you're saving the field names and what, what you're occupying in those field names. So let's go ahead and click Save Search. In the bottom right corner, there's a little heart, and it says Save Search. When you click on it, it prompts you to give it a name. So you would type a name in this here section. So I'm going to start mine with an at symbol because it actually brings it to the top of the list. In our, because this is a training account, there's three trainers that frequently use this account, so there could be a ton of saved searches. So let's go ahead and give it a name, and I'll start it off with A, so it goes right to the top. Um, let's see. I'm going to say Andrea Kona three twos. Okay. Now that gives me some kind of an idea of what the search is going to be performing, and you could even get more detailed than that if you'd like. Um, like uh, up to, uh, to 650K, um, three, two, minimum. You know, you can add your, whatever will help you remember what the search criteria is going to be displaying. So I could click Save, and it's going to save that, okay? Now, let's go ahead and clear out all the search criteria, all right? and say that we just logged in for the day and we get our first phone call and guess what? The person wants to know about three bedroom, two bath homes in North Kona. So let's go ahead and open up our saved search by going to the list of my saved searches. So you click on the list and then what you want to do is you want to find the search and if your name that you gave it isn't give you enough clues, you can always review what the search parameters are going to be right here. Okay, so let's see, I called mine Andrea Kona. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to click on Run the Search Now. So it doesn't give me those 24 results that we just looked at. It just fills in all the fields with the correct um, criteria and now all I would have to do is click search now. But I would want to tweak this a little bit and probably just put in 3-7 until I understand the, what areas of North Kona the person likes and that kind of thing. And perhaps their price range is more than 650, it's more like 950 or, you know, you can make change, whatever changes are necessary before you hit the search now button. Okay. So I think that'll be a big uh, time saver for you. Um, now, like I mentioned to you earlier, I focused on the south part of the Big Island. So for my account, if I was logged into my account for my saved searches, you'd see everything um, like land search Hove, land search Discovery Harbor, land search Mark Twain Estates, land search South Point. You know, so I had all the different areas. Then I'd have homes. Um, and then I'd have the condo uh, that's down there 
at Sea Mountain, and um, et cetera. So it, it can be different types of property. It can be specific areas. It can be specific subdivisions. Yeah, let's talk about how do you search a subdivision. So let's go ahead and click Modify. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click Modify, and I can add a subdivision name right now. Um, and it doesn't, as long as it's the subdivision name that I'm going to be adding is in the North Kona District, it shouldn't be a problem. If it's outside of North Kona District, then there's going to be a conflict and it won't show up. Um, so if you were going to add a, a, a search in the subdivision name that's outside of that tax key, you would just want to take the tax key off. So, and I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. All right. Now, subdivision field. Let's scroll down and find our subdivision field. And you may have to open up additional sections. Okay, the MLS detail. So we're going to scroll down through here. And eventually, we'll find the fields that we're looking for. So it's actually located under this area in the MLS detail called location, location, location. Okay. By the way, we do teach a class. I don't usually teach it, um, but it has something to do with customizing. Um, so if you take that webinar from us, we will teach you, say you don't like the name location, location, location. You can change that. Um, you can change what fields fall in, in these different subcategories. So um, be on the lookout for that. That's kind of a more advanced thing, but, we, but you can actually change how these look and where some of the fields appear, et cetera. So say subdivision is a field that you use frequently. You would probably want to put it up in the first section that's called the quick search. Okay? So to utilize the subdivision field, you just click your mouse in there and type in your subdivision name. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I'm, not, I'm not sure of what your history is, but I came um, from the mainland, um, from the south, I came from Kentucky, moved to Hawaii, and I did not know how to spell a lot of these words to begin with. <laughs> and even after 15 years, I had difficulty on a few of them. <laughs> um, so anyway, the cool thing is, is if, it, if you at least know the first few characters, the first few letters of the subdivision name, that's all you need to search with. Um, so you can see I'm going to put in KEA, and then I'm going to click outside the box, and it's, the system is going to go and find any subdivision name that begins with the letters KEA. Okay? So therefore, you don't have to be a good speller. Um, if you know at least the first or second character, that'll help you narrow it down. So um, let's go to that really hard to spell name, I think, Keoho. And that's where my office was in Keoho Shopping Center. So I, I did actually learn how to spell that one. <laughs> All right, so let's say that our customer um, or our client wants something in Keoho View Estates, okay? So we'll go ahead and select that. And then when I click outside the box, and I click on search now. We are still looking at three bedroom, two baths, up to 950, um, either active or contingent. And now we've specified a specific subdivision name. Um, and, and all of our requests information is down here. So okay, now let's talk. Perhaps you're going to be doing a lot of searches right now um, for your clients, and you don't want to have to continually change it into customer format. Um, so we want to get rid of this, okay, so that we don't see the listed by. So let's go ahead and click Modify. I'll show you how to convert it over into customer format as a default right now so that you don't have to do it every time you go to print it or email your listings or what have you. So you can um, take care of that by clicking the format bar. And on the format bar, these are all the formats, by the way, if you haven't explored this yet. This we would go over in the formats class. Okay, So I'm not going to spend any time playing with these formats today. However, let's go over to the options. And here you can 
specify that you want your listings to be in customer format so you don't have to keep converting them over. Okay? So let's select customer format and then click outside the box somewhere. And now when you do your search now, your listings will automatically be in customer format. Okay, now, if you really like this method um, and you want it to be like this all the time, then you can change it in your settings. Because right now, I have just, for this session that I'm in right now, I have just specified, I have a preference of seeing it in customer format. However, next time I go and log out, and then when I log back in, it's going to be back to the other way where I'm going to have to take it off of customer format again manually. How do you change that? That would have to do with your settings. Okay? There's a couple different ways to get into your settings. Um, I collapsed the search menu so I could show you right down here. There's a settings link. So you can click on that. And then I believe it's under formats. Oh, nope, wrong. I believe it's under search display options. There we go. Search display options. Now, um, nope, that's not it either. How interesting. However, but now that we're here, we're going to talk about this for a second. Okay, so you see how uh, right now I have it set to show the days on market when I'm in customer format. Okay, so I can uncheck that. So let's, let's go back for a second and take a look and see what that means. So let's go to our search. And now that we're back in the search, I could have hit the tab up here as well. Um, our days on market, this column right here, still appears, okay, even though we have it set to customer format. What if you do not want your customers to see that? You have the opportunity to hide that section, okay? So once again, we'll go down here to settings, okay, settings, and search display options. And then we would uncheck the days on market. Okay? So let's do that now. Don't forget to click Save Changes if you've made any changes here. Now let's go back to our search. And um, you are going to have to click Modify so that it will repaint the screen or resubmit the information for you. So I clicked Modify, and all I'm going to do is click Search Now. And now, there is no uh, days on market up here, okay? So you have the ability to take that portion off. Um, let's talk about some other things right here. What you're seeing on this display is the MLS one-liner, okay? And you have the ability to um, have this section right here show or not show, and that's called the display. And the display, as you can see, um, are comments inserted from the listing agent. Okay, just another little blurb, um, a little bit of extra marketing, you know, great unblockable views, this one says. Um, this one says, ocean view for miles, ADA friendly, lots of upgrades, Central A, Central AC. This one has some directions. I mean, you can use it for different ways. Um, in addition to that, it also shows the location. And the location field is coming directly from public records. It's nothing that the agents can type over and change or anything. So, um, so that's why this is kind of your marketing area, <laughs> and this is the actual address, okay? Now, let's click Modify, or let's go back to our settings. I'm sorry, Settings, left-hand side, bottom, and under that Search Display Options that we were just looking at, you can turn these features off. If you do not want to see the display and you do not want to see the location, you can uncheck those. Okay. Now when you click Save Changes and then we go back into our search and have it refresh, click Modify, click Search Now, 
Okay, now it's a lot more simple. It doesn't have that marketing, those little marketing blurbs. It doesn't have the location. It's just got the bare bones here. You know, land area, interior area of the property, bedrooms and baths. Okay, so you can um, decide for yourself if you want that there or not. And you can always change it at any time. So to change that back, search display options, and we'll go ahead and select all those things again. Now, this no wrap just means that it's not going to wrap down to a second line. It's going to specifically stay on one line. That's all. All right. OK, so let's now go back to our search results. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes left, and so it's perfect time to ask a question. If you'd like me to help you with a basic search, um, I believe now you probably have enough information to go on where you can find the fields that you're looking for in the quick search or the MLS detail or any of these other subsections below. And then if you still don't find a field you're looking for and you need help with a more advanced search, um, you can always call our 800 number to help, for help. You can also explore on your own these add fields. Um, the add field section will open up this list of all of the fields that are contained in our database. So between the MLS fields and the fields for um, public records. You can see all of them here. There's hundreds of fields, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go into this right now because if you take the advanced searching techniques, we will certainly um, explain to you in detail how to use that ad fields as well as the whole class is um, going to be searching out of the ad fields. So, now it looks like I might have a uh, person inquiring here. Okay, um, Mariah, I just unmuted your microphone. Go ahead if you have a question. Oh, okay, um, I was actually just wondering if you can look up specific types of real estate agents like commercial real estate agents or timeshare agents, or is it just agents in general? It's just agents in general. Um, you can, I believe, search on people's designations if they're, you know, C, C, um, uh, I can't, ABR or SRES, that kind of thing. Um, but one way that you can kind of narrow down those types of listing agents is by looking at listed property, you know, um, like commercial property and kind of take a survey then of um, who's listing that types of property. So there's no specific uh, way to do that that I'm aware of out of the roster. So. Okay. okay. You. You're welcome. I'll go ahead and mute your microphone back. And then if anyone else has a question, please uh, ask that now. And we'll be ending the webinar shortly. And if you wanted to sign up for the next webinar today, you can always go into the training um, and click on the link to register. We'll be having another webinar in about 45 minutes on formats. And that's where we spend the entire class showing you how to um, display the data in many different ways. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and mute my microphone. I'm going to thank you for attending. Big mahalo. And I hope that you've learned something. Go back and share that with people in your office. That would be great. Um, and I will be on stand on mute and if you don't have any questions you can go ahead and exit the webinar now thank you for attending and um, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day aloha